Today, we're diving into the fascinating and somewhat controversial topic of what causes ADHD. Is it DNA? Is it epigenetics? Is it trauma related? Are we born with it? Did we just walk into it. Let's get started. And this information is really overwhelming for me and also overwhelming to explain. So hopefully I do my best. Let's talk about it in the comment section. Real quick, I do want to say a welcome back to the channel and hello to all the new visionaries here. If you haven't already, remember to hit the subscribe button, join our community all about ADHD, mental well-being, and personal development. Feel free also to check out my TikTok and my Instagram for more daily content. No pressure there, only if you want to. Also, my Patreon is back up for exclusive content for those of you that want to support this growing channel a little bit more with that out of the way let's dive in adhd and genetics this is a meaty topic first let's talk about the genetic component of adhd a lot of the things i found agree that genetics play a very significant role in the development of adhd a lot of studies that have shown that adhd tends to run in families so if a parent has it there's a higher chance that a child might also have it my mom watching a lot of my videos admitted to me before she passed away she's like i think i have this which looking at you know who she was as a person i was like yeah why did i never think of that so it's interesting that first degree relatives of individuals with adhd are much more likely to have adhd themselves interestingly is that twin studies have been particularly insightful revealing that identical twins who share the same genetic makeup are also more likely to both have adhd it's a strong hereditary link suggesting that genes play a crucial role my twin sister she's never been diagnosed like actually diagnosed but she's a lot like me and she pretty much feels like she has it. Specific genes have also been linked to ADHD. For example, the dopamine transporter gene and the DRD4 gene have been implicated in ADHD. What is the DRD4 gene? Sounds like a droid in Star Wars. Ugh, the DRD4. The DRD4 and the dopamine transporter gene have been implicated or connected with ADHD in science. These genes affect how dopamine, a neurotransmitter involved in attention and behavior regulation, function in the brain. The DRD4 is one of the most studied genes in connection with psychiatric disorders, and it's been associated with many neurological issues, including ADHD. Also among others is substance dependencies, personality traits, reaction to stress, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, motivation and thrill seeking, and risky behavior. So this DRD4 gene or dopamine receptor D4 gene, it is a neurotransmitter critical for regulating mood, behavior, and cognition. It is associated with the limbic system of the brain, which is involved in emotions, motivation, and reward. Basically, there are variations in the DRD4 gene, especially the seven repeat allele of the VNTR, which have been linked to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Individuals with this allele may exhibit higher novelty sinking behavior and are more likely to develop ADHD. Not everybody that has the seven repeat allele of the VNTR have ADHD, but they've been studying it and it's a higher probability that you do. Again, individuals with this specific allele may exhibit higher novelty seeking, AKA lack of like impulse control. So this was so overwhelming for me to understand. I'm gonna try to explain how the DRD4 gene with the seven repeat allele, what that actually means. It took me a second to understand it. So imagine a recipe book with different versions of a cookie re recipe. One version uses chocolate chips, another version might have a, a raisin recipe, another version might even use M&Ms, for example. All of us have a recipe book and the DRD4 chapter is cookies, but everybody has a different cookie. These versions are alleles. They make up different traits, the way somebody might look, their eye color. Alleles are basically different traits. Everybody has a different version of it. Now, the VNTRs are repeated instructions in that recipe book. So one book, book might say, mix for 10 seconds, and then it just repeats like, mix, 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 mix for 10 seconds, or mix, mix for 10 seconds. That is the VNTR. They don't change the recipe, but they help identify the book. So just like people's VNTRs help identify people, in forensic, people use VNTRs to help identify different individuals. So again, for the DRD4 gene, it has a section where the instruction is repeated. So for some people, they have it repeat seven times, which is linked to ADHD, but other people might only have it repeat two or four times. So again, alleles are different, different recipes that make up different traits like cookies, and VNTRs are repeated instructions within the, within the cookie recipe that helped tell people apart in the DRD4 gene 
is where a number of repeats can be linked to traits like ADHD. I hope that that makes sense. I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about our DNA and what it looks like for people with ADHD. So the DRD4 gene has been studied in relation to personality traits such as novelty seeking, risk taking, impulsivities. And some studies suggest that individuals with certain DRD4 variants may have, be more prone to seek out new and stimulating experiences. So that's just like, that's just one little factoid that I learned about DNA and the way the brain is wired and the DRD4 gene is connected to people with ADHD. Just because you have the seven repeat allele doesn't mean you have ADHD, but the chances are likely and they're doing more studying on that. Again, the DRD4 gene plays a critical role in dopamine signaling and is connected in various behaviors and psychiatric conditions, specifically with ADHD. Let's explore the role of epigenetics and ADHD. Epigenetics is a field that studies how environmental factors can influence the way a gene is expressed without changing the DNA sequence. Like your DNA doesn't change, but the way it expresses itself is changed. Essentially, it looks at how our environment can turn on or off different genes. Environmental factors such as stress, chronic stress, diet, exposure to toxins can affect expressions related to ADHD. For example, studies have shown that chronic stress can lead to epigenetic changes and may contribute to ADHD symptoms. Another thing is parental exposure to certain toxins or poor diet during pregnancy can also influence the developing brain in ways that might cause someone to be predisposed to ADHD, like as a child in the womb, if your mom is not nourishing her body, it'll affect the development of your brain in utero and then even after, because it all starts from you know conception, like the way you develop in the womb, the way you develop outside of it. You wanna hit certain landmarks, and if you're not hitting those, based on toxins and diet and things like that from the moment of conception, that can affect potentially the way your brain is developed and could cause you to have ADHD. And using our recipe book analogy that I had from earlier, a great way of explaining epigenetics, turning on or off is putting sticky notes or bookmarks within a book. Like changing a recipe, if we had that cookie recipe, you could put a sticky note in there, turning on or off certain things like don't forget to add this or whatever, like that is epigenetics. It is the way DNA or genes are expressed and they can change over time as opposed to DNA doesn't change. When I was saying turning on or off, it's almost like you could put a sticky note in the book to be like, skip this part. Like you can just skip something all together, but it doesn't change the contents of the book. It just changes how you use it. Your DNA doesn't change but how your DNA's, DNA expresses itself does change. You can't change your eye color, but you can change the way DNA is expressed. Now let's talk about ADHD and trauma. I have been asked about this. I have been looking into it myself and it's very fascinating to me. The impact of trauma and adverse childhood experiences can affect somebody in a way that causes them to have ADHD. There's a lot of new research out there that indicates early childhood trauma, such as abuse or neglect can definitely significantly affect the brain's development and function. Trauma can lead to changes in the brain's development and the brain's structure and function that resemble those seen in ADHD. For example, children that have experienced trauma often have a higher levels of stress hormones pumping in their body, which can impact areas of the brain involved in attention and behavior regulation. If you're constantly in fight or flight mode and you're constantly pumping endorphins in your body all the time, your body is constantly thinking it's at war when there's nothing really there. So it affects the way certain parts of your brain are developing over time. This suggests that Trauma can either cause ADHD-like symptoms or it can cause the existing symptoms to be worse. However, it is important to realize that not all children who experience trauma will have ADHD and not all individuals with ADHD have a history of trauma. The relationship with ADHD is complex. There's a lot of new studies looking into it and I've been curious about it for myself because I wanna know if, you know, I definitely have some traumas in my past. Are those connected with why I have ADHD? looking into how the brain can heal itself and all that stuff is really exciting for me, but it was interesting to make that connection and to look into this and see that there are connections with ADHD and trauma. It could be a connection or a reason why somebody has ADHD. So are we born with ADHD? This is the question of all questions. This question leads us to look into factors that happen while we were in our mother's womb that may contribute to our ADHD, the status of the health of the mother that was pregnant and the behavior that the mom had during pregnancy, 
does play a significant role in the development of the fetus's brain. For example, if the mom smoked or used alcohol or was exposed to certain toxins while she was pregnant, could have a link to the baby having a higher risk of ADHD. Also, there's premature birth and low birth weight are a risk factor for people with developing ADHD brains. There's new research coming out that shows brain development differences can be detected in children with ADHD from a very young age, maybe even some aspects of ADHD being present at birth. So the last thing I wanna discuss is nature versus nurture. I feel like we've talked a lot about that already, but just the nature versus nurture debate. Is ADHD caused by environmental factors or is it natural? Is it passed down genetically? It sounds like a little bit of both, but I'm not a doctor. I am just a girl enjoying researching all of this. It does seem to say, all the research seems to say that ADHD is a condition that is both genetic and environmental. And ADHD can be caused by both environmental and natural factors. So basically genetics provides the foundation predisposing somebody to having ADHD, but environmental factors can also influence whether these genetic predispositions manifest themselves, whether they turn on or off. It's interesting to think about that it could be a connection between genes and environmental factors that could ultimately shape the development of ADHD in different individuals. For like example, a child with a genetic predisposition to ADHD might develop the condition if they are exposed to certain environmental triggers such as toxins, childhood trauma, or chronic stress, but if that same child was born and didn't have the trauma or the early to or the toxins or the chronic stress, maybe they could have been supported in life to kind of get around some of the impact of the genetics that they were predispositioned to, predisposed to, and they might not have ADHD at all. Like if they had really supportive environments growing up and positive experiences growing up, maybe they can somehow get around it and the impact of their predisposed genetics won't play such a critical role in the development of their brain and they won't ultimately have ADHD. So is ADHD real? I, I don't know, I'm fascinated by the concept of that because I've had people in my comment section say ADHD isn't real. You know, it's only something that's come around in the past few decades or so. It's out, it's out of the world right now. Everybody's being prescribed medication. I am interested in it, but at the end of the day, when I got my diagnosis, whether it was genetics or whether it was environmental for me growing up, whether it was just trauma, the term ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and I have inattentive type, that is the term that fit the way I function. So whether or not ADHD is real and we can like isolate a specific gene, like you have the ADHD gene, that's to me beside the point because the way I show up into the world, I relate and I feel finally understood having gotten my ADHD di diagnosis. And even before my diagnosis, just looking into it, I broke down crying when I found uh, the how to, I think it's Jessica McCabe, uh, for how to ADHD when I found her TED talk on ADHD like I broke down crying and my older sister was the one that was like You need to watch this. I think you might have ADHD. I was like ADHD. I had been looking into so many different like psychological Symptoms and you know, am I depressed? Do I have bipolar? Do I have borderline personality disorder? And none of them ever made sense to me but whenever I looked into ADHD inattentive type because I only ever thought of the hyperactive type, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have that. So whether or not ADHD is real, it is real for me. And I think it's real for a lot of people. And I think that we function in this world in a way that can be difficult for us to navigate. And learning about this genetics and learning about nurture versus nature, all of this has been super interesting and insightful for me. And I hope it's interesting and insightful for you. But yeah, I... I feel like ADHD is real whether or not you can see it or not. Love is real. Feelings are real. You can't see it, but it's there. And ADHD is an umbrella term that matches the way I show up in the world. So that's my take on that. And that's my opinion. I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it puts you, I hope you do your own research. I hope it causes you to go down your own individual rabbit holes to learn more about the way the brain develops, epigenetics, DNA, the way we're made, the way we're wired and start asking yourself questions about you know, your past. Maybe put some questions in the comment section below. We could all start a conversation if you wanna join me over on my Patreon. I learn from you all. So I hope you're learning from me. 
I'm just a girl with a camera everybody wants to know. Just kidding, that is a Blake Shelton song. I'm just the guy with the girl everybody wants to know. I just love to do research on mental health, personal development, ADHD, and things like that. So I hope this video was informative, or at least makes you start to ask questions for yourself and do some of your own research and we can all learn from one another. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please share it or like it, give it one big thumbs up. Definitely helps me out. Also helping me out a lot with just to be sub subscribed, sub 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 subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more content like this, follow me on TikTok, Instagram if you're interested, no pressure there. And join me over on my Patreon so we can have more personal conversations and chats and things like that. That'd be really fun. So you can join the aviators over there. And also you all must know by now that you are beautifully and wonderfully made and you are in my prayers and I will see you next time. Bye.